Hey guys, welcome to this Mometrics video over pronoun antecedent agreement. Let's first start by reviewing what a pronoun and antecedent are. A pronoun is a word that is used in place of a noun to refer back to a noun. For example, Lucy performed her dance at the talent show. Her is the pronoun referring back to the noun Lucy. An antecedent is the noun that the pronoun is referring back to, or the noun that the pronoun is taking the place of. The prefix anti means before, so the word antecedent just means that something is coming before something else. Like in our last example, Lucy performed her dance at the talent show. Lucy is the antecedent that the pronoun her is referring back to. Now, the phrase pronoun antecedent agreement refers basically to using the correct pronoun to take the place of the noun, and the pronoun replacing the noun must agree with it in certain ways. The pronoun must agree with the antecedent in number and in gender, but more specifically, here is how that plays out. One, only a subject pronoun should be used to replace a subject noun. A subject noun is the noun that does what the verb is saying it does. For example, Matthew ran the 300 meter race. Matthew is the noun that is doing what the verb said, he ran. Therefore, Matthew is a subject noun. And remember, to replace a subject noun, we must use a subject pronoun. There are two types of subject pronouns, singular subject pronouns and plural subject pronouns. In this case, we have a singular subject noun, so we must use a singular subject pronoun. Singular subject pronouns include I, you, he, she, and it. Now in our example sentence, Matthew ran the 300 meter race, Matthew is a person and not a thing. So we would not use the pronoun it. Remaining on the list, he is the singular subject pronoun that makes the most sense. So, we could use the singular subject pronoun, he, to replace the singular subject noun, Matthew. He ran in the 300 meter race. Number two, only an object pronoun should be used to replace an object noun. An object noun is a noun that takes upon the action of the verb. So the verb is acting on the noun. For example, the bus driver drove the kids to school every morning. Kids is the noun that is taking upon the action drove. They are being driven, they are not driving. So they are taking or receiving the action of the verb. Kids is a plural object noun, so we need to use a plural object pronoun to replace it. Plural object pronouns include you, us, and them. The plural object pronoun that makes the most sense in the context of this sentence is them. So then we replace the object pronoun kids as well as the article adjective the with them. Now we have the bus driver drove them to school every morning. Three, only a feminine pronoun should be used in place of a feminine noun. For example, Felicity went to the mall with her friend. Felicity is the feminine singular noun, so it needs to be replaced with a feminine singular pronoun. So, she went to the mall with her friend. Number four, only a masculine pronoun should be used in place of a masculine noun. For example, let's look back at the sentence we used in our first point, Matthew ran in the 300 meter race. We've already looked at this one and replaced it with the correct pronoun. We replaced the singular masculine subject noun with the singular masculine subject pronoun, he. Number five, only a singular pronoun should be used in place of a singular noun. We've already looked at a couple examples of this, but here is another. The car could go up to 200 miles per hour. Car is a singular noun, so it needs to be replaced with the singular pronoun it. It could go up to 200 miles per hour. Number six, only a plural pronoun should be used in place of a plural noun. For example, Children can bring so much laughter to everyone around them. Children is the plural noun, so it needs to be replaced with the plural pronoun they. They can bring so much laughter to everyone around them. Now, these are general rules that we need to be aware of, but here are specific pronoun antecedent agreement rules. Number one, what to do when you have an antecedent that is an indefinite pronoun. Anyone, anybody, someone, somebody, something, 
each, either, neither, everyone, everybody, everything, no one, and nobody are always singular indefinite pronouns. An example of this in a sentence would be, anyone is welcome to play as long as he or she follows the rules. Now notice that it would be incorrect to use the pronoun they to refer back to anyone because they is a plural pronoun. And remember, only singular pronouns can refer back to singular nouns. That is why he or she is used to refer back to the singular indefinite pronoun anyone. Several, both, few, and many are always plural indefinite pronouns. So if one of these plural indefinite pronouns is an antecedent, then you must use a plural pronoun to refer back to it. Here's an example. Only a few really understand what their purpose is. Few is the plural indefinite pronoun antecedent, and there is the plural pronoun referring back to the antecedent. Number two. Anytime you have a compound subject or a compound antecedent that is linked by and, then you use a plural referent. A referent is just the pronoun referring back to the antecedent. For example, Madison and Lindsay did their chores. The noun Madison is singular by itself, and the noun Lindsay by itself is singular. But because Madison and Lindsay are joined by and, it is a compound subject and therefore plural because it's referring to more than one. So that is why the plural referent there is used. Number three, anytime you have a compound subject that is linked by or or nor, then the referent pronoun should always agree with the antecedent that is closest in the proximity to the pronoun. That may sound confusing at first, but let's look at some examples of what this means. Neither the coach nor the players did their best. Since players is closest to the referent, the referent should be plural because players is plural. Look at this example. Neither the players nor the coach did his or her job. Coach is closest to the referent, so the referent should be singular because coach is singular. Number four, be aware of the meaning of a collective noun. It may be singular or plural. Collective nouns includes words like team, crowd, group, choir, flock, jury, committee, and so on. Let's look at an example of one of these nouns being used as both singular and plural. Mrs. Johnson's class takes its final exam today. Class in this sentence is singular, so the singular pronoun its is the referent. Now look at this example. Upon completing an exam, the class starts on their next assignment. In this example, class is a plural collective noun, so there is the plural pronoun used to refer back to it. Number five, titles of a single entity should have a singular pronoun referent. Titles of a single entity might include things like books, countries, an organization, and so on. For example, the silence of the lambs left its readers stunned. The silence of the lambs is singular, therefore we use the singular possessive noun, its, as its reference. Another example might be, the United States just had its 241st year celebration of independence. The United States is singular, so the singular possessive pronoun its is used to refer back to it. Number six, if the word every or many a comes right before a noun or even a sequence of nouns, then it takes a singular referent. For example, every dog has its day. It may be counterintuitive to think of every as being singular, but such is the case. Number seven, when the phrase a number of comes before a noun, then it's plural and should be followed by a plural referent. When the phrase the number of comes before a noun, then it is singular and should be followed by a singular referent. Here are some examples. A number of people offered their assistance after the hurricane. A number of is plural, so it takes on the plural referent there. The number of geese flew its way south for the winter. The number of is singular and therefore takes on a singular referent, its. Number eight, if there is a clause or phrase in between the subject and verb, then it does not alter the number of the antecedent. This sounds more confusing than it is. Let's take a look. The teddy bear with big eyes sits in its chair. Even though the clause that is in between the subject teddy bear and the verb sits is plural, it does not alter the fact that teddy bear is singular. 
so its referent needs to be singular. That was a lot of information at once. If you need to, be sure to look back for review. I hope that this video over pronoun antecedent agreement was more helpful than overwhelming. If you enjoyed it, then be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for further videos. See you guys next time.